Hey guys, this is my first review in, a, in quite a while, and I, it's it's a, it's a doozy of, of, a, of a review for a movie, and that is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the new Quentin Tarantino movie, a movie that I've been looking forward to a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't done a, a review since like Toy Story 4. I've just been going through a lot of different things, and I'm ready to start putting out some more some more stuff on my channel here, starting with this review. Um, yeah, this is a movie I was looking forward to a lot. Uh, Quentin Tarantino always delivers quality, even if some of his movies aren't as good as I was hoping they'd be. Like his last few movies, I haven't loved. Uh, I found particularly like the second half of those movies to be sort of weak. So I was just hoping that, that this would be a, a fun time in the movie. Above all, it's two hour and forty minute movie, so you don't be you don't want to be bored through all of that time. And it, obviously, it wasn't. It was a it was a lot of fun. But I will say that if you are a big Tarantino fan and you've enjoyed these last few movies and how bombastic and entertaining and 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 how like story driven yet still dialogue driven they are, uh, you may want to check your expectations at the door with this one. This one doesn't really have a plot. It really doesn't. It's more based off these two characters played by Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio and their their friendship. It's it's the driving point of the movie. And it focuses more on that than an actual narrative. Uh, and I think that would be somewhat frustrating for for some viewers expecting a, a story or a plot to attach themselves to. But uh, it really doesn't have that. And I noticed that about an hour to an hour and a half into the movie because it's a long movie. But I, I noticed that it wasn't going to be a movie with a straightforward narrative uh, pretty early on. And I accepted that because I just enjoyed being in this world. And it's a it's a fantastic, fantastically directed world created by Quentin Tarantino. Obviously, it's a he just captures the spirit of the late 60s, like perfectly to the point where it becomes a little film school 101 at times. But this time it didn't really bother me like it has in some of his uh, past movies. because so I just enjoyed it. And above all, this is sort of a comedy. It's more of a comedy than it is a, uh, a, a drama. I would even say not even much of a dark comedy. Yeah, it has dark elements particularly in the final third but it's mostly just a, a good buddy comedy with these two characters that you, you just latch yourself onto you know within the first 20 minutes i found myself loving every character that was being introduced <laughs> so i just enjoyed watching these characters and their relationships play out um there are some things that that seem to drag a little bit some scenes maybe go on a little bit too long and and tarantino has done this in his past two movies where where narration will pop up like out of nowhere. Uh, it happened in The Hateful Eight. And it does happen in this, uh, and it, it's kind of unnecessary, and it just seems like a another way to, 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 to make the movie more of an art project, more than an actual film. Um, but it didn't take me out of the movie, because right after that we get into essentially the climax of the film, which is, is very entertaining. And while the movie does get violent... Uh, compared to his last few movies, I found that when the violence occurs in this, it, it sort of made sense within the world of the movie. You know, you got movies like The Hateful Eight, which are very tense, and uh, Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained and are very tense movies, and they become cartoons in the last 30 minutes. This one always had that sort of like Big Lebowski feel to it, so when things get violent and, and sort of silly at the end, it it made more sense to me as a viewer. Maybe some people won't agree with that, but that's how I felt. And I do think that this, to me, is his best, most enjoyable film since Pulp Fiction. I, I give this the slight edge over, over Jackie Brown. Uh, I, I really, really enjoy Jackie Brown a lot, but I think I like this a little bit more, and I think that will that won't be a very popular opinion. I think some people love Inglorious Bastards like so much, and that's always been one of my... One of my least favorite films from Tarantino. I still think it, it's it's good. And it has great elements, but it just isn't one of my favorites. This this was very funny. A very funny script. Uh, really good performances. Um, and just a, a technical achievement. Obviously, there's the set designs and and the camera work and the editing. Uh, I assume this was a pretty expensive movie. I looked at the budget. It was like ninety million dollars. That made total sense to me. Like you had to, she had to use that budget to its full potential. Um, some people walk away from this uh, feeling like they got nothing out of it, like it was pointless. And the movie is kind of pointless, but in the, in the vein of something like The Big Lebowski, which is deemed a comedy classic, 
I think this is like that. I think maybe more people will appreciate it over time, or maybe mainstream audiences will get it right away. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It's one of my favorites of the year, probably top five of the year for me. I give Once Upon a Time in Hollywood an A. Um, there's just some things keeping it from being an A+. plus. It, it does lack somewhat of an emotional core, though I do think this has one of the, the sweeter and heartfelt endings of any Tarantino movie. Maybe the most sweetest and most heartfelt ending of any Tarantino movie. Let me know what you thought of this movie in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, and thank you for watching.